what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Soup Reviews. Uh, today I'm going to be reviewing the, the film Fast and Furious 7. Fast and Furious 7 is about... God, what is it about? It's about, like... It's about, like, a bunch of dudes, like, driving cars, and then they were, like, driving cars, and then they killed the dude in the last movie. Sorry. Spoilers! And then his brother was like, nah, son, you don't be doing that. And then he came up in the spot, was like, yo, y'all know me, but you about to, come play him. And then he blew up some dude, and then they was like, nah, son, you don't blow up my homie. And then uh, they were like, we gotta, we gotta fight for our homie. And then, like, like the dudes, they, like, fought some, and they, then they've been hunted by that dude, and they're like, you know what, son, we gonna hunt you. So they had to go, like, find, like, the God's eye so they could find him all the time. And they would be like, ooh, there you are. And they could find him. Be like, turning over a rock, finding a bunch of maggots. Ooh, there they are. Yeah, it's, it's overly convoluted, but I don't think anyone really cares about what the plot of a Fast and Furious movie is. Because that's not why we go to the movies. For Fast and Furious. We go to see a Fast and Furious movie because... It's explosive, it's cars, it's stupid, it's ridiculous, and you gotta shh. And that's that's what we expect when we go to see a Fast and Furious movie. And so I went into this movie knowing that there was gonna be some sort of weird thing. I knew that much. I just I just wanted to see cars drive between face of building, and I wanted to see some explosions. I want to see I wanted to see people punch each other, and uh, I think most of all I wanted to see how they were gonna send off Paul Walker and. Uh, this is definitely uh, this is definitely a nice send off for him. I was watching the the first Fast and Furious film the other day, and he really he he's grown as an act. He grew as an actor, and he matured, and and I think this is the most mature and the best performance he's given of his entire career. He's usually the best part of some movies. Uh, Brick Brick Mansion is a good example of that. He was he was great in that. Uh, he was probably the best part of the movie. It was real bad. There, but there was parkour, and there was a dude that invented parkour, and he was like, "Hiya!" Yeah, so, so I, I really wanted to see how they were gonna handle that, and and they they handled it really well. Uh, the final scene uh, with him is, it's it's remarkably poignant, and is that how you pronounce that word? It's, it's remarkably poignant, uh, point poignant point. I felt it here. Uh, I shed a tear. Uh, a lot of people in the theater did, and it's it's just it's a tr it's a tragedy, and and it's it sucks that it happened, but it did, and just gotta move on. You know what I'm saying? And in the spirit of this, isn't the best Fast and Furious film of them all. I ca I can't specifically I can't exactly say that I hated this film, but I also can't say that I loved it. The action was more constant than in any of the other Fast and Furious movies, but I don't I don't think that's 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 the key here. I think because Fast and Furious Six is probably my favorite, uh, aside from the first one, which is a different entity entirely. I like them for different reasons. However, Fast and Furious Six is probably my favorite action-wise because it, I, the the pacing was so perfect. It was it was like a little bit of story, then you get a little bit of you get a few jokes, and then you got a little bit of you got a little bit of action, but it wasn't constant. And here it's more constant, and I think that really draws back. That really draws. I think that really draws back from the appeal of it all. Action sequences are only memorable when they're like when they stand out, but but when you have them as constantly as they do here, I think that's when they start to blur together. And towards the end, I definitely started to check out because. It got it got so monotonous after a while, and it the action sequences don't get me wrong they're they're awesome. The stunt choreography is incredible. The hand to hand combat scenes are are fun to watch, and they're they're always great in these movies. You got you got you got your big fights that it, obviously the ones that you'd expect. I'm not going to spoil them in case you're an idiot, but I'm kidding. Calm down, Jesus. Jesus! I'm not gonna spoil the mirror in case you don't know, but it, people fight and punches are thrown, and it's pretty cool. I definitely thought there was there was a, 
a certain inventiveness to the choreography. Another problem I have with this film is Jason Statham as the villain. I don't think he's, I don't think he was exactly imposing. I, I just saw, I think, I think, look, take it like this. Take Jason Statham out of the movie and replace him with a no-name actor and no one really cares about that character. It'd just be a, a villain that'd be killed off within the first 15 minutes. But because it's Jason Statham, they make him they make him evenly matched with everyone, and it it is believable. But I don't I don't think he was as compelling as a villain as say the last guy, Luke Evans. Luke Evans was as the last villain. I thought he was much more. He felt like he was a threat. And this film, I don't I don't think there's any real threat. I think this is this film is focusing too much on action sequences and trying to have the next best thing and trying to one-up the last film, and I think it got lost in all that, and the villain just became something no one really cared about, which was a disappointment, because I love Jason Tatham. He's great. He's, he, he does kicks and such, and he's like, hi And then I was like, ooh -hoo! I am very not. Vin Diesel has has an on-screen presence, and I love seeing Vin Diesel on screen, because because in interviews and things, he's, such, he's the nicest guy. He, he, or he looks like it. Could, he could be playing us. You playing us? In all seriousness, he does seem to be the nicest guy, and that and he he has a chemistry with all of his co-stars. Uh, uh, for example, in Guardians of the Galaxy, even though that was just his voice, there was there was a chemistry between him and Bradley Cooper, and it was just their voices. Here, he has a chemistry with Paul Walker, and that's why and the family dynamic of it all makes everything so much. It adds a certain emotional weight to what would either what what would otherwise be a forgettable action movie. Dwayne Johnson, you guys. That's code for buff. There are scenes where he's just covered in baby oil and whew. he's got an on-screen charisma, and it just it just draws you to him. And he, he, he's great in every franchise. Vin Diesel and Dwayne Johnson, are, they're, they're, they're cool guys. They're cool buff guys. Speaking of buff guys, James Wan. The big action set pieces are well directed. The, they look beautiful. The CG is damn good. Uh, but, so you start a car? Well, wait. All right, we're just gonna go with it. Director James Wan did, did a great job with the action set pieces. The way the action set pieces look is is great. It's, can we not? The, the scene where the where the car is driving between all the buildings, it looks beautiful. And there's a bunch of scanning shots and it's crisp. And I was like, <laughs> that's the best thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but the problem is that the hand in hand hand to hand combat scenes. While I did say that the choreography is great, and in the few shots that I actually saw, they were great, but there's too many cuts. It does the same thing Taken 3 did. There's, I think the action, the hand, the, the regular just, the, the poorer class of action, I think those scenes work better when when he's doing that whole spinning camera thing and he's going around and I was like, Ooh! I just didn't feel James Wan in this movie. And James Wan is an incredible director. I love Saw. I like The Conjuring, not as much as everyone else. And Insidious? Huh? Also, can I just say, there are some cameos from previous films that you'll be like, Woo! I don't know why you do that. I like James Wan as a director, but I, it, this is first action movie and I understand. I understand you wanna, you wanna, you wanna make it look like everyone else's movies. But, that said, no, there's no need to, to fast cuts. Aside from that, I, I was really entertained throughout this entire film. I, I, was, I, I, I actually giggled at one point, and it was the girliest giggle I have ever giggled. But yeah, the, I was really entertained. I, I checked out a little at the end, but I never, I was never like checking my watch like, come on, you better wrap it up. Like, like I said, if, if, you, if you go into this wanting action, then you're gonna be Flash Gordon. But if, if, you, if you go into this, and you can't suspend your disbelief, or you just don't want another Man of Steel, then I, I would say avoid it. I like Man of Steel. I would have liked to see this paced better. I would have liked the hand-to-hand -hand combat to be directed better. 
but it was uh, all in all it was entertaining and I had a good time. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have to recommend that you you catch this in theaters because it is a theater experience when it's up there. Oh, you'll be smacking your buttons, but I think you should do so at a matinee price. So thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for enduring this. And uh, I appreciate uh, if you would like the video, subscribe, do all this stuff. Everyone's telling you to do it. Why don't you just do it? All the cool kids are doing it. All right. Thanks, guys. Low brow queen. I'm just sitting in a chair.